And finally, what a day it's been for Sniffy the Rat. Sniffy grabbed international headlines when a Vancouver artist announced plans to crush him with a concrete block, what he called a sort of avant-garde form of art. The event was scheduled for this afternoon, but animal rights activists stepped in and saved Sniffy's life. As Karen Webb reports, they also gave the artist quite a scare. I, I no longer have Sniffy. In the end, Sniffy wasn't snuffed. I have returned him to the pet store I rented him from. They're twisted, man. They're weird. However, the angry crowd of 300 that had gathered to stop artist Rick Gibson from killing Sniffy wasn't quite in the mood to forgive him. We should be getting you the idea to kill a small mouse. Well, you You're a save monster. Sniffy. I'm going to release that block. Yesterday, Gibson was saying he planned to use concrete blocks to squish Sniffy between two canvases, what he called performance art. And I think he also said it was a more humane death than being eaten alive by a snake, a possible fate for a pet store rodent. But then, earlier today, a militant animal rights group called Life Force stole his Sniffy squashing concrete blocks from the back of his van. That away. By this afternoon, Gibson was visibly frightened by the crowd. After his speech, he asked the crowd to disperse and tried to leave himself. Hey, hey you should throw up a brick on your head, don't you think? But he didn't get far. As reporters tried to question him about the point of all of this, some angry protesters caught up with him. Let go right now. You guys, where's the car? Gibson took off across the street and into a local hotel. The crowd followed. He ran behind the front desk for safety. Finally, at the request of the hotel manager, the police dispersed the crowd and Gibson was hustled out a side door. As for Sniffy, Gibson did return him to this pet store. The rental fee for the week was $2. And yes, he will live. Sniffy has been purchased by the animal rights group. That cost $3.99, plus tax. Karen Webb, CBC News. Ben